Right, okay, thank you. So when it comes to surgery for tetralogy of fallow, leaving the patients who have a normal sized annulus and in patients in whom you need to create a transannular patch, you're left with the dilemma of two problems. Number one, do we leave a residual stenosis, which of course has its immediate risk and higher chances of reintervention? Or you leave a free flow pulmonary regurgitation, which causes in the long term left ventricle, right ventricle dysfunction and a redu reduction in the functional status and arrhythmias. Which one of the two is the lesser evil? But what I want to talk to you today is about how do we prevent significant pulmonary regurgitation? Because if you look at the pathophysiology of TOF correction, and we look at pulmonary regurgitation is one of the major factors uh, which crosses uh, chronic right, vol right ventricular volume overload and uh, RV dysfunction, along with other factors such as the RVOT patch ischemia, RV aneurysm, and uh, diffuse myocardial fibrosis. But when you come to dealing with the uh, surgery for tetralogy of fallow, you need to understand that there's a lot of morphological variations. If you look at the various morphological variations that you have, and if you look into this group of patients, those with the hypoplastic uh, infundibulum or the annulus, definitely in this group of patients, you cannot preserve the valve or the annulus. You need to do some form of a transannular patch. So in order to do the transhandler patch, what are the ideal uh, strategies that one would want to adopt? When you're looking into this, you want to have a minimal or a no transmural right ventriculotomy, which we know that from the previous literature that the large ventriculotomy does cause a significant problem. You want to optimize the native pulmonary valve function so that it lasts for a long duration. And you want to, at the same time, promote the growth of the pulmonary artery. And you want to minimize the need for reintervention in the future. And last, you also want to minimize the late morbidities uh, resulting from surgical intervention. Now, how would we prevent pulmonary regurgitation? Well, number one, you can delay the surgery. You could probably palliate the patient in the first instance probably with the aim that you let to grow the pulmonary annulus and then go in for a total correction. Number two, you could deal with the annular level doing a reconstructive procedure. Or number three, you could deal at the valvular level to do some form of a reconstruction. For the purpose of this lecture, I will delete the delay surgery and I will go with what Richard had mentioned, go for surgery at three months and an early surgery. But now when you go into the literature, what we have is a different ways in which one can prevent a pulmonary regurgitation. And of course, we have moved away from the classical uh, uh, TOF corrections using a large ventriculotomy. And uh, I think most of the time now, the transatrial trans, uh, and uh, 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 a ventricular approach, as mentioned by Roger Mee, is a more accepted uh, way of uh, dealing with this condition. And so we have gone away from performing large ventriculotomies. But then again, when you do a transandular patch, do we leave the pulmonary outflow tract wide open, or do we need to do some kind of a reconstructive procedure? Of course, what has been uh, mentioned for the last 20 years is the use of a monocusp valve reconstruction, first described by Professor Kurosawa and group. And of course, the uh, technique has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, elaborated by the Loma Linda group and what they found that in the immediate post-op it does help, but in the uh, early and the long-term result it doesn't. Uh, but what we have from the uh, John Brown's uh, 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 reports uh, for the last 20 years, he has done his, uh, 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 you know, results from the transannular patch technique using a monocast reconstruction. He's shown that the overall survival has been pretty good using this uh, technique as compared to the uh, other uh, uh, non-transannular pa uh, uh, patch techniques. But the freedom from reoperation has been pretty good in the first 10 years. But after 10 years, if you look at the reintervention rate, it starts to uh, you know, uh, uh, 
go up in a very exponential manner. So that means that you can probably uh, use this uh, monocusp technique for a period of time, but then again, probably this is not the uh, real uh, solution in the long term. But nevertheless, it does have a significant good results uh, for a significant period of time. But from his uh, uh, study through the MRI uh, data, he's, uh, received, he's uh, concluded that it is not the pulmonary regurgitation that is the problem causing the re-intervention, but it's more of the pulmonary valve regurgitation fraction that is the main cause for reoperation. So probably if one could look into that particular aspect of dealing with the pulmonary valve, probably you can try to overcome this problem. Then of course there's also been a theory of doing a limited transannular patch. Uh, uh, so that with the hope that a limited transandular patch will prevent significant pulmonary regurgitation. And this was a study from the Rochester group, which uh, was published some years back uh, uh, on, your, on the limited transandular patch technique using a Dacron patch, because we know that the uh, autologous pericardium or a glutaraldehyde treated pericardium does have implications in the long term because it can cause aneurysmal dilatation and worsen the pulmonary regurgitation. Probably a stiffer material such as a Dacron might be a, a suitable alternative. In their data, if you look at their follow-up uh, echocardiogram using the uh, limited transandular patch technique uh, compared to that of a non transandular patch where they, wherein they just performed a ventriculotomy preserving the valve, you can see that the patients who had the limited transandular patch, though the valve size was small, but they tend to grow as, the, uh, as time goes by. And at the same time, we also noticed that the patients who had a limited transandular patch more than a pulmonary regurgitation. They had a higher gradient across the uh, pulmonary uh, valve. And if you look at the progression of the pulmonary regurgitation, was not much of a difference uh, comparing the two groups. Uh, but though the reoperation rates were uh, more in the uh, limited transandular patch group, but the tra that intervention was not for pulmonary regurgitation, but it was more for uh, catheter-based interventions for uh, stenosis. So probably this could be another alternative uh, uh, that we could ca have to have a limited transannular uh, patch using a synthetic material. The valve sparing transannular patch technique also has been in for a long time, and this was a first uh, concept mentioned by uh, Dr. Sung from Korea and colleagues uh, about uh, 15 years ago, and there's been various modifications to this uh, particular uh, technique, but uh, the main idea is to restore the pulmonary valve uh, geometry so that with the hope that you can prevent pulmonary regurgitation in the long term. Now, this is the results from uh, late, lately that came out from the Columbia group, uh, looking into this, uh, uh, their technique of the uh, valve sparing uh, transannular uh, repair. And they had compared their results against a standard transannular patch and a non-transannular patch technique. Obviously, the progression of the pulmonary regurgitation was uh, much uh, less uh, in the uh, uh, in the valve sparing technique compared to the transannular patch technique. And at the same time, they also noticed that uh, by uh, following up these patients to look at the uh, pulmonary annular Z scores, uh, interestingly that though they had to reconstruct the pulmonary valves, there was growth in the pulmonary annulus and that was actually keeping in with the patient's uh, 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 normogram. So this is one of the other ways in which we can probably look into to preserve the uh, annulus, thereby to prevent uh, regurgitation. But now from the data that we have, all that we are doing is more of a subjective kind of a measurement, what would be the right size, what would be the right measurement that we, have, that we need, but we do not have any objective measurements of how much a transannular patch do we need, what is the diameter of the uh, transannular patch, or what would be the size of a monocusp reconstruction that we need to do. So we have been involved with a collaboration with uh, Dr. Ignacio Luganos from uh, Argentina. He has come out with a new geometrical rule to achieve a normal pulmonary annulus. Uh, this was a part of his thesis for his PhD. 
And uh, based on his uh, concept is that we know that you, you have a real uh, perimeter of the patient's uh, annulus, and he compares that with the uh, normogram using the rollout formula. So a, a transannular patch is designed uh, based on the uh, difference between the, peri the normal perimeter and the real perimeter and adding in a three millimeters uh, 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 space for placing in the sutures. So with this, he has come out with a normogram. So the normogram of how much of a width of a transannular patch that we need uh, to perform this uh, uh, procedure. So what, what if any patient has a Z-score of less than two, then we will definitely go ahead and use this uh, transandular patch technique. It's all right. If it doesn't work, I will speak still. <laughs> all right. So what, what, what happened was uh, we used this particular technique. And uh, the, the way in which we do is uh, uh, we do the standard approach for cardiopulmonary bypass. And then once we cross clamp, we do a small uh, limited uh, ventriculot uh, uh, ventriculotomy of about five millimeters in size. And then based on the normogram, uh, whatever the size of the patch that we need, we make a rectangular size patch. And we use that rectangular size patch to reconstruct the right ventricular outflow tract. So together we have performed about uh, 20 patients uh, with this uh, particular technique. And based on this particular uh, technique, we have, uh, of course, we had good uh, uh, outcomes in the sense we measured the pulmonary annular size and at the same time the gradient across the right ventricular outflow tract. And most of the patients, we were able to maintain a right ventricular outflow tract less than uh, 30 millimeters of uh, mercury. And at the same time, we measured the annular size and the patients who had a small annular size ultimately did catch up with the normogram of the patient's uh, uh, annulus. And uh, this is something that we have just done in the last one year. Of course, we need to look at the uh, long-term results to see how the outcomes would be. Similar to how we use this particular transannular patch technique, we also have a normogram for reconstructing a monocusp. So based on a table, we will use the appropriate size uh, monocusp in order to, uh, which is measured based on the normogram, and this particular norm, uh, monocusp will be used for reconstruction, and this is something that we want to uh, adopt in the future, it, along with the uh, uh, transannular uh, patch uh, method. And there is one other technique that we are still uh, in the research uh, at the moment is to create a tri-leaflet uh, kind of a reconstruction uh, similar to that of uh, Professor Ozaki's technique of a tri-leaflet reconstruction in the aortic valve. Hopefully this particular uh, tri-leaflet uh, reconstruction, if it comes in the near future, hopefully that will uh, uh, prevent the uh, 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 pulmonary regurgitation in the future and that might be the answer. So in conclusion, is uh, we still haven't found the right answer for what is the best technique uh, to prevent uh, uh, pulmonary regurgitation. But whatever uh, uh, you know, information that we have until now is more of, uh, uh, objective, uh, of subjective uh, measurements to see what would be the right form of uh, a technique that we have. Hopefully in the future we look into more of an objective measurement of uh, how exactly of the width of transannular patch that we need and what is the exact kind of uh, valve annular reconstruction we need in order to achieve the perfect pulmonary regurgitation and hopefully in the future a tricuspid or a tricuspidization uh, technique of the pulmonary valve may be the answer to prevent pulmonary regurgitation. Thank you very much. Yeah.